What's going on, everybody? Just got back in from the Derby Card Show, and believe it or not, this is take four. I think my web camera from when I first started breaking here, you guys see if there's a main camera, is finally going. It's froze on me a few times. I look up, and I'm like in the middle of showing cards. <laughs> all right, guys, so hopefully I get everything out. Uh, I've been saying in these videos because it's all starting to blur together, but got to show it like 7 in the morning. was set up by 7.45. Ate my chow for breakfast from good old uh, chick fil -A. Um, decided to do a walk around then. I want to say there was four dealers completely set up and three or four more in the process. A lot of dealers weren't even all set up by nine o'clock when it was supposed to open. So it was just really weird again for dealers showing up. And I'll talk about the foot traffic here in a little bit. Did my initial walkthrough. Uh, found, well, overheard a conversation with a guy looking at another person's display who was setting up. He goes, oh yeah, this case is 50% off. And you like, no, with me, it's like light bulb, music and ears, all that stuff. Like, boom, go, look. Found a nice stack, which is this stuff here. We'll talk about that here. Um, basically, I went on a whim with trying to know what the pricing was and guessing at. And I did pretty well at 50%. I knew a couple were high, a couple were low, but it averaged out like being, I spent 500. I think the value was 990. It's either 993 or 997. I threw the, uh, <laughs> my notes away. So I'm not too sure offhand, but you guys guess. Basically, I was pretty much at 50%. And if two cards PSA tended, probably bring it down around 40% or lower on to what I got. But really, really overall happy with it. Um, the pickup there, I'll show you that here in a second. Then I did a large uh, trade and cash deal with a friend of mine, which is probably somehow in the title of this video and probably a blurred out picture <laughs> into the thumbnail. This might be my biggest pickup that I spent for this year. I think it actually was more than the Jordan Auto. Uh oh, now you guys are curious. Like, what is the card? You'll be surprised. Wildcat, my apologies right off bat, man. Not a whole lot of football today. Not a whole lot of football, but there were some nice football pieces. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot walking around. I seen one other person had kind of had like, you know, the two, three, five, eight hundred dollar um NFL like quarterback rookies, but there wasn't a whole lot of it. Uh, a couple dealers were one, two, three were only baseball only, really. Um, just with stuff I just couldn't really use and, you know, I just didn't really want to take gambles on it, especially when I've spent like 500 before the show even opened up. And then I did the big deal because I was going to go back to the gentleman I bought this from and ask him the stuff that wasn't the 50% where he would want to be at on to it. And I did ask him the question. I don't know if I said it in this take of the video. Um, I asked him why. He said he just had something come up and wanted to sell. He doesn't normally do it. And I'm like, huh. So I think between just three of us dealers, he probably sold a good chunk. Because once I started, I told somebody else. And then somebody else went over there too. So not too sure. Let's see. Uh, for me, sale-wise, I usually don't say how much I sell. I try to keep that out of the videos. It was probably one of my lower ends. But I think for anybody else in there, they've been really happy. And I'm just going to throw the number out. It was almost 800 uh, that I saw. It was like 796 or something like that because the value boxes. Uh, a lot of people were, off of me took case hits, rookie quarterback autos. There was a couple odds and ends like a uh, PSA 10 Prism Base Justin Jefferson rookie PSA 10. And then another PSA 10 Jefferson Select Silver Prism rookie. And then, and then like a Harry Kane soccer auto. Um, but yeah, I think those were like, kind of like the odd cards that people picked up off of there, other than the value boxes or like, you know, case hit, color blast, um, Ritter, RPA, stuff like that, that, you know, were fairly cheap, but overall, not really bad show. There wasn't a whole lot of foot traffic. I don't know if I was talked about this yet or not, but there wasn't a whole lot, and I'm not too sure. We talked about dealer-wise and some of the people walking around. Um, kind of like conjugated some people around with me and stuff, just chit-chatting. But there was a small show in Nashville, a small, or another show up in Cincinnati, and some of the bigger dealers I usually buy from went to those shows. So that kind of threw out, like, all the Hall of Fame football autographs, Wildcat. That's where they all went to. Um... 
that there, and then college football being today. I, I don't know if U of L and uh, UK were home today or not, but that could be a reason with the opening games, tailgate, and all that fun stuff. You know, I don't know. I just do not know on that one there. I knew a couple guys that usually come around. They buy a good bit from me. I knew they were going to other shows this weekend already. So just it was different. Um, but it was good because it was like a slow but consistent type thing to where I always had people there. But it wasn't like very jam packed, I guess you could say offhand. But. Ah, it was pretty good. I mean, for finding a 50% off person and this big trading cash I did at the end, it was, uh, I think it went very well for me at least. Ooh, I'm trying to think. Um, rookie quarterback autos and rookie quarterback graded stuff, big thing out there. Some people were starting to look at basketball. There was like a couple of baseball only dealers that might have been one of the things why they didn't do well. I at least know one didn't because he was. Telling me he didn't really do well. If I want stuff, he'd give me a package deal. But it was just nothing I really could use. Um, Sorry, guys. I had to wet the old throat. Trying to think here. But other than that, yeah, I got home. And then I had to... like I, I don't know what all I said in this video. But I had to go pick the dog up, unload. And then eat some chow. And I took a quick nap before Zoom tonight. Are right, you guys ready to see what the heck I got? I'm sure you are. All right. The first few cards here, I took on a whim. They were very, very cheap at 50% off. Underpriced, I'll tell you that. Um, these are all going DC because I don't think they have a slight chance at PSA 10s. And 9s just don't make sense because they're close to what the raw values are. And I'll just get it with DC and get my, you know, make a little bit of money back off the stuff, like 20, 30% roughly. So Zion, red, white, and blue. I, honestly, he had this at marked at 40. I got it for 20. I remember that price. And this was really cheap because the centering top and bottom. But I've seen other ones like this selling for around 60 to 70. And I picked this up, I want to say for like 20 bucks too. So I was like, what the heck, gamble? You know, we'll see what happens with it. These were going around 25 30 each. I paid 20 a piece on, so that wasn't like really the 50% margin. This is going for around 40 I got it for 10 So you can see where I've made up some of the differences are. But these will all go DC. Uh, because I try to strive to get 10s on stuff or have a better good form fuzzy onto it. All right, football, Wildcat. woo -hoo. hey, back here. Hey, we got football coming up. All right. Spectra Aspiring um, Ayuk. This, I want to say, was doing between 50 and 60 This, I know I picked up for 20 because there was a $40 price tag on to it. Couldn't beat that. This was a shocker. Yeah, I marked a 30 and it's a rookie from Playbook. Going, I think it was either 51 or 53 last sale. So, I mean, good pickup on the stuff like that. This, I want to say, last one was 185 As you guys see, I picked the other one up that was raw. I took the graded two from them. Um, this I paid $100 for and lasted $185. I know that because I remember going back right after I picked the first one, picking up two other cards. So pretty cool there. $180, last sale on this. This is the Prism Red out of $299. He had, this is the one where I used he had an example of $250. I picked it up for $125. It wasn't really, you know, 50% would have been $90, but I'm not. At the prices he had the stuff on, was not arguing. He was spot on. The only thing I could find is the discos. And believe it or not, the, uh, what do they call it, the fast break in these were pretty much similar in other variations and sales. So 150 got it for 75 And then these two I'm actually grading. Zion Green, if it comes back a 9, it's like 100 and something. But I picked this up for 25 and this for 30 and I could not find one. It's the Disco Variation Rookie John Moran. I know, bang, bang. Um, i seen some nines doing like 170 to 190 a little while ago. So I have no idea, but it has a shot at a 10 with the centering and everything. So I have no idea where the price point add on. I just did, did a raw at, I, th I think I had raw at like 80 or 100 roughly because of what the nines were, do were doing. All right, guys, ready for the big, big end here? 
So trade went down. I don't remember what all went into trade. I know there was like a smaller Mike Trout auto, a Justin Jefferson auto from Origins. I got rid of the Ben Roethlisberger. You guys didn't even get to see it. And Phillip Rivers dual auto. Uh, and then um, AJ Green silver bar from 2016. And then cash. So up first, I have not seen this card in ages. Tony Gwynn, 92 Fleer Ultra Autograph. Seven with a 10 auto. Um, these were coming out close, to, well, just over like 202, 204 on sales. There was one a little bit higher, 250 raw, but seven with a 10 auto. I figure some majority were a two. We called it two. You guys could see where the Fleer is, where the light is. That was the old embossed crimping thing. So really cool. I don't know if that's the exact reason why they did it with a 7. I doubt it. But if you look the back left corner here, if it shows, come on camera, focus. There's that whiting, but I don't think that much on there would have been it at all. I don't know. But pretty cool card to pick up uh, in the deal for 200 You guys ready for the big one? Man, I can't believe I did this today. I usually try to pick up three nice cards every year. This is number three, so I'm out of nice cards I'm allowed to pick up for myself this year. It is not a Michael Jordan auto. I promise you that. I promise everybody there it's not Michael Jordan. Upper Deck Exquisite. This was, I want to say, 2018 or 19. This is on the case here. The marks you see right there. I got new ones coming in. Um, LeBron James. Who's ready for story time with Extreme? Okay, I had to do it. I know it's my little mark out to Adam Cole, baby. All right. So I've never seen this card ever. And there's some history behind this. These are not serial numbered. They were redemptions placed in a product. Anybody knows Upper Deck with LeBron James, this stuff is very limited. I mean, come on now. Has anybody seen the Space Jam Auto come out yet when all them blasters people opened up? They're probably five or ten. This here, I believe, is probably one of them ones they only made five or ten or maybe 15 of. I'm, I'm going with ten in my head. I don't know for sure. So he took this card to the National to speak with Upper Deck. And he had to come back Thursday to the Saturday. And the guy who actually made these cards talked to him. These were made this way, which is your vertical. And you had horizontals. There have been, well, one sold twice. But three horizontal sales. 4,200, 4,500, and 2,800. I think it was 28, yeah. This is the only one that the guy from Upper Deck said was redeemed. Now we know these are definitely expired by now. Um, I don't know for sure where the other ones were or if they'll ever come out or whatever, but this is really cool to have like part of the shoe, I guess shoe strings up in here, of a LeBron James auto, non-numbered, and they Upper Deck had no idea why they'd number them. They said they should have. They did this once before in a product, and I can't remember what it was, but it was they forgot to stamp the numbers onto the card. Don't know. Um, like I said, this is only the story from another person who went to Upper Deck, and I've known him for long enough where I don't think he's going to be, you know, feeding me any lines of crap. But pretty cool piece to pick up. Um, this is probably not going to leave my hands, to be honest. It's probably going away locked up unless it would feed into like some kind of crazy I gotta have this card in my collection type deal. So, you know, there's no serial numbers you can't find. You can find the horizontals online like that. It look a lot. I don't like the horizontals. And my thoughts process was this. Let's talk NFL RPAs. Um, NT, if they're like this, this is a true RPA variations like that. People pay more for the one like this than this. You know, and that's my thought process on it, not to try to pump this up into a new, you know, oh, it's, you know, big card. It's now $10,000 or whatever it may be. I really don't know the value on to it. I had a, an idea in my head. We went with $100 more than the idea with my head, which ain't bad. And uh, 
I'm happy overall with getting it. It's really a cool piece onto it. Very, very cool piece. But let me know, guys. What do you guys think? I mean, I've never seen that card before, ever, pop up on Golden. I couldn't find anything anywhere on it. He couldn't either. We could only find the verticals, which were the other ways around and stuff. But the kids come home, and it's, I would say, 99.9% .9 not leaving me until I probably would uh, say I'm no longer collecting, and I would offer it back to him first since it came from him. But pretty, pretty cool piece overall. Joey's already gotten to see a picture of it, and he was like, holy crap. I'm like, yeah, I didn't expect this to come into the card show the way things were going with people having stuff and bringing in, to be honest. But pretty cool. I wanted to get this part of the video done because I think a couple, well, at least the Gwyn will be probably sold tonight, and then stuff will be going to PSA Monday and or to DC Sports, and the rest is just, you know, hold, hold, hold type deal. But... Appreciate y'all watching the video. Um, having story time with a good old extreme onto that uh, piece of upper deck. You learn something new every time. And I, from my experience of always interacting with upper deck, on <laughs> four year waits on LeBron autos out of five and stuff like that, I can see them saying he was hoping to get a memorandum and then printing it out, like saying, hey, this is the only one that we know was redeemed type deal of this stuff but no avail to it so it's one of those stories that's just gonna stick out there and kind of a cool story you know if it holds up and like i said they were redemptions i don't know upper deck is different like if you pull a jordan or lebron and it goes on social media and it's expired i think you're probably getting that or another card of it so one might populate, but that's... Oh, I forgot to say, that's that exquisite, I believe, was out of Goodwin Champions. So definitely different. I'm going to do some more research onto it later today, but... Yeah, let me know what you guys think. You guys like it? I know not a lot of football, Wildcat. Don't, don't hit me up too hard, man. Don't hit me up too hard. LeBron has to be kind of cool. You have to admit that, at least, in this. All right, guys, that is it. I'm done blabbing. i um, done this video four times. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm just saying, keep on saying um the whole time. But I'm out. Thank you for watching, as always. I'll catch you guys next video.